Hi, everybody. It's Dee Slater with Create with D. Welcome to my Wednesday live at 10 o'clock in the morning, where I'm streaming both on Facebook and YouTube. I hope everybody is having a good morning or having a good day whenever you happen to be watching this video, whether you're going to join me live or you're watching the replay. Well, this week we had an eclipse that went through our area here. It was really something to behold on it. Um, our, I didn't personally go like my dad lives an hour away where he was in the total in the path of the total eclipse. I had kind of planned on doing a little something like that, only I was in the dentist chair. <laughs> I had, of all things, um, a tooth infection, which is, as you guys, um, if you've ever had that, you know that it basically is, um, you know, irritant on a nerve. So um, I was um, reclined in a comfortable chair while the eclipse was going on. Um, and then also um, this week, too, I have to just um, thank my local card class girls that um, all of them were able to bump out our day. They're going to come later on this afternoon instead of yesterday. I was just getting over all of the um, antibiotics that I was taking. And so, um, you know, it, they allowed me to um, get a little healthier before class anyways. Well, um, enough about all of that. Um, hi there. Um, hi, Joan. Hi, Marge. Thanks for joining live. I appreciate it. Um, well, today we are going to be doing um, what I'm calling Think Pink Card Class. And well, it's not like Barbie pink. It's really like showing how that we can take that bubble bath pink and incorporate it into our cards here today. And on two of the cards, I've got um, a unique way to cut a card base that you can utilize a little bit differently. Um, it's not necessarily a joyful, but something similar to that. Um, as we do that. Also, um, as we get started, I meant to print something off, but I didn't. Um, we are, um, yesterday started the last chance um, sale in, that Stepping Up is having. So these are products that are retiring um, from both the annual catalog and the January through May or April mini catalog. I always call it the spring catalog mini catalog. So um, please go on to my um, my Stampin' Up! website, uh, which is dslater.stampinup.net, and you can click on shopping and specials, and it'll show up there. A little tip that I wanted to give everybody is um, I'm going to pretend that this is like you're opening up the main screen on the Stampin' Up! Um, store that you have, whether it's on your phone or tablet or, you know, your PC, wherever you're at, you can actually sort the products um, by price, by alphabetize, whatever, so that if you know that, um, like when something goes on um, sale, you can actually go. So what I did is I went to um, products or specials, last chance, promotion or sale, whatever they're calling it. And then I go over to price or like sorting. And then on the price, I sort two different ways. The first is I sort um, price low to high. What that's going to give me is like the lowest prices will go first. So the like the real bargains um, are going to show up first so I can see all of that. Typically, it's the accessories, right? You know, it's going to be the ribbons, the blends, um, any of that kind of stuff. So if you want to kind of filter out that, you can sort it by um, price, by lowest to highest. Now, the same way, if you want to see what bundles are retiring to make sure that you don't miss out um, and some of the higher price tickets, you can sort it by highest to lowest on the specials. And that way it kind of pushes all of the higher price items up to the top so that you can see if there's any um, deeper discounts on, on those other more expensive items that you might have been looking for. And of course, the same approach can be for um, alphabetizing. So if you know, like for example, we're going to be looking at timeless arrangements. If you want to see if that one's going to be retired or if it's any components of that's on sale, you can sort by it alphabetically and probably from Z to A so that, again, that letter, wherever it falls in the alphabet, 
is sorted accordingly. So that's just a little tip on sorting sales or really any time that you want to sort um, on Stampin' Up! that there is a stamping or sorting option there. Okay. Um, also, before we get started, I thought I would just um, share with you my April um, card class options that you can do if you want to um, stamp with me at home. Um, we have um, the class that I'm going to show here today. This is the April kit to go. So um, this will be the video that you can watch to make your cards. Um, also, I have um, today's the last day to enroll with the um, creative club. It's um, also the last day that you can lock in the price at $39.99. I show $40 there just to say $40. But after today, I'm going to have to increase the club prices um, for new club members simply because um, the cost of stamping up some of the basic supplies are going up um, in May, which would affect the next club. So you can lock in the club price for another year if you want to enroll by today. And then also the fl floating um, strip technique class by the 18th. And at the end, if you want to stick around, I'll show you samples of those to see if you're interested in taking those classes. Whoops. As I throw things on the floor. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to think pink with some pink ac accents on our cards. And like I said, I'm going to kind of feature the Timeless Arrangements bundle um, with this. So I'll turn the camera around and we'll get started. All righty. So here are our cards that we're going to make today. So um, I'm going to be talking layers. I'm going to be talking um, embossing folders as well as um, our, um, you know, the featured stamp set and bundle that we have here. So our stamp set and die that I'm using is Timeless Arrangements. These are in the annual catalog. And this month would be the last month to get these at the 10% discount on it. And um, I don't have my list here. Shoot, I don't have my book. I'm not sure if these are retiring or not. There's a lot of them in there that are. So um, chances are this one may be retiring as well. Um, if nothing else, the, I know the bundle price retires at the end of the month. What I liked about this um, this bundle is I liked all of the sayings that um, was in there. Plus, um, we're going to explore these really interesting um, flower dies that um, are made for going behind labels. So we'll get started doing this. All right, let's do this one here first. I'm going to get my accessory pack out here. All right, so this card, um, we're going to start with um, a piece of um, thick basic white cardstock cut at four and a fourth by eight and a fourth, and we're going to score that along the long side at two and three fourths. We're also going to need an additional two pieces of white cut at four and a fourth by two and three fourths. We're going to need our Think Pink bubble bath, our bubble bath um, cardstock. One cut at four by five and a fourth, two at four by two and a half. Knight of Navy, three and three fourths by five, and two of those at three and three fourths by two and a fourth. And the DSP is my code for designer series paper. You've seen everybody use that probably before. Cut at basically it's two by three and a half. And that is delightfully eclectic. That's the, you've seen me use that paper a few times now. Um, and it's just that there's so many different. That's one. Whoops. That's one that's going to be going away here pretty soon. My, all of a sudden, my phone just kind of kicked out. I hope everything's okay. Um, so anyways, those are our measurements for this card. And here again is kind of the, like a different way of thinking about cutting our card bases. So let me get one of these. All right, so we, um, again, this was four and a fourth by four and, or four and a fourth by eight and a fourth. And ahead of time, I've got it scored at two and three fourths. But it actually started out with a piece of, a half a piece of cardstock at four and a fourth by eight and a half. 
So if you want, you can go ahead and, you know, take your cardstock, your eight and a half by 11, cut it in half at four and a fourth. So then you have this and then cut two and three fourths off the end. And then that leaves you with your four and a fourth by eight and a fourth. And then we're going to score that. But we're not going to throw this away. We're going to utilize that on our card. So um, this way you're going to get, you can make two of these out of one piece of cardstock. Okay. So um, ahead of time, what I've done is I, of course, cut, pre-cut all of these measurements. And let's go ahead and we'll get some liquid glue. Let's see here. For those of you that know me at card class, it's like you're going to be very impressed. I'm using a brand new one. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do some layering. Um, ahead of time, what I did is I embossed this with a retiring, uh, or not retiring, but a, a retired embossing folder called Ornate, um, Ornate Flowers. And we'll talk embossing folders here in just a little bit. But you can emboss this with whatever um, embossing folder that you may like. And I did that on the Knight of Navy. And we'll get that matted onto our bubble bath. And then we're going to get this matted on the inside of our card base. And let me get a crisp edge on this so that we can see. All right. All righty. And then we're going to take um, one of the layers of um, the Knight of Navy. And again, on one of the, um, the layers of the smaller ones, um, I embossed that too with the same embossing folder that I did on the inside. Hi, Linda. And we'll do that. Oops, we might as well go this way. That's how I'm going to orient the card. And then we'll get this on. So I'll kind of hold this up for just a little bit before we get, I get too far ahead of myself. Um, just wanting to kind of share with you that um, you can, like that any embossing folder um, will really give your card just that next step up with hardly any work from you, but it really can just add that extra element that it, it needs on it. Um, I was such in a hurry of designing this, I meant to make my one sample without the um, embossing the top layer just to kind of show, but if you've got you know, a die cut and emboss machine, um, like go ahead, don't forget to use those embossing folders for just a really quick step up to your cards. And so um, we can see the background here of what that's gonna look like here in just a second. All right, so for our layering pieces, let's see here, there it is. So we're going to mirror the layering on this one, only that I'm covering most of the Knight of Navy on this layer with designer paper. So there's no need. Um, I didn't think there was a need to go ahead and emboss that. So these two layers are exactly the same. And we're going to take that other piece of the, you know, the, um, on the half a sheet of cardstock that I said, you know, if you wanted to do that and cut the two, um, two and three fourths off. That's the extra piece of that half a piece of cardstock that we started with. And we can keep that one. And we're going to layer that. Onto it. So simple layering can really pop the cards. 
that you have. Um, if you watched my class last week, um, you know, we talked about, you know, whether you like an eighth of an inch or a fourth of an inch. And I, like most of you, I really enjoy the fourth of an inch. And this is going to go ahead and get centered onto the front of a card. Oops, let's do the layer. So this is from the Delightfully Eclectic. And I picked the pattern that had these floral images. And that's why I picked the floral, even though it was a retired embossing folder. I thought, and you can, there's other floral embossing folders in there. And actually the retiring um, timeless texture is one of my all time favorites. That one's retiring. That one's always a great background. And when we put this on, we want to be mindful to put the adhesive just on the top half. This was very similar to what we did last week with our double Z folds. I don't want any adhesive on the bottom part of it. And we can center that onto our card base. Now for this one, what I did is I took an exact piece um, or cut an extra piece of basic white at four and a fourth by two and three fourths. So it matches exactly the white layering that we have there. And let's do our stamping that we're going to do for this card. And on, I'm going to use the three labels that can be found in the Timeless Arrangements dies for card class here today. So this die set comes with these really, with three um, rectangles that will work with the sentiments in the Timeless Arrangements stamp set. So on this one, we're gonna use this little, this little narrow one here. I don't know if you guys have seen this arrangement or not, or the this die, but look how cute this is. It's not only stitched, but in the center of it, they've got a little X marks the spot. That was really cute. And let's see on this one, we are going to take some crushed curry accents and this and this. Okay. Whoops, need that one. And when you get your class materials, this is what you'll get a separate bag that has all of the little goodies in it so they don't get lost on us. Okay. For, um, on the sample that I used on this, I um, we're gonna use all of the images from Timeless Arrangements here at class. But I did want to point out that um, feel free to mix and match your, um, your bundles that you have. So for example, like with the floral images here, like Sentimental Park, which is not retiring, but you know, you can mix and match those. So I, I did that on a sample just to show that, but we're going to use all of the images from Timeless Arrangements. So I'm going to add kind of this little tulip image using our bubble bath and we'll stamp that on the inside and with night of navy we'll stamp the you're the best oh hi i'm glad valerie thank you i'm so glad that you like the cards and we are going to You're the best, Night and Navy. Oops, can't see what I'm doing off camera, can you? <laughs> I was moving that as I was talking. Let me get this re-stamped here for us. There we go. Okay. And let's see, what else do we want to do with this? Why don't we um, can use a little bit of Night and Navy for some other image. Like these are, again, some like... Um, I'll call it line art images. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp off. I don't want it to be too overpowering with the pink. Okay, so there we've got that. Okay, I think that's everything we need for stamping wise. 
All right, so why do I really like this bundle? Um, I really like it for the dies. Well, I like it for you know both the stamp set and the dies. The dies are really unique in the fact that you have these little sprigs that are all ready to go for us for putting it behind the um, the labels. So you know you can just go like that, or like how I'm going to do. I'm going to cut these in half. Um, and then we can put these however we want on it too. So it kind of takes positioning them a little, some of the guesswork off of it. Um, also, it gives us a nice place to put our adhesive um, since they give us this nice strip here. So let's see, so I'm gonna do that. And then I can go, I can flip that over to the other side and go upside down and then this one, it has these two um, branches and I'm gonna use just one. I can snip one of them. Now, if I wanted to, I could turn and use that one the other way, but for class, I wanted to show all of the other images. This is just a little independent image. And so we're gonna use that one too, but you could so um, not clip this and use that one too, but um, that's how we're gonna do that. And so let me flip this over. And let's see, um, you don't see me use it too often, but I'm going to use some Seal Plus on the back here. And I'm going to use it mainly as a, a temporary anchor because I'm going to pop this up. All right, so here's the side that I want. And I'm going to start with the bubble bath. And look how nice that just, that gave us a nice strip to use as an anchor instead of just a little stem. So if that's what, um, you know, if you like that kind of um, look, that this might be a good one for you. And I probably should have cut that one down because I'm gonna need a little more adhesive now. There we go. So I want this to be in the forefront. So I'm putting the pink on first, our bubble bath our Think Pink, and then we're gonna get our Crush Curry, little doodad, our little um, sprig, and we can put that on. And I want this one to go down the other side. So because of those layers, or the, um, you know, this little strip of cardstock that comes with it, it really makes putting those on the back super easy. All right, let's get some dimensionals on it. And I'll probably get three just to kind of hold all of these down. I didn't space that real well. And put this on our bottom of our card. And then what's kind of fun is that because, um, like, feel free to let these hang over this little section here to kind of, you know, go beyond the rectangle that's in the center here. Kind of, I think, gives it a little artsy feel. And then let's go ahead and we'll put this on the inside. And we'll finish up this card here. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like the layers. All right. And let me make sure I got this going in the right direction. Okay, so um, to get this to close exactly where we want it, I'm gonna turn this upside down. Put this down, I guess. As you saw, I put adhesive on the back side so that when this is closed, the images are facing right side up. Close it. And then we have it. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> And don't do it like that. Oops, we're gonna hurry up and go this way. Perfectly aligned. Good guess, following my step. Okay, we get how to do it if you just, you know, do it the right way. All right, now I know it's there. It's a good thing that we embossed that one because that gave it a little more of a raise on it to reposition it. There we go. Um, Couple of things just to finish it up, just to dress it up even more. I'm gonna add this um, Knight of Navy bordered ribbon. 
and I'll grab a glue dot. And we'll put that up at the top. And I'm going to grab some rhinestones. I'm just showing different bling that you can use on these. Um, just basically to encourage to use whatever um, jewels that you have available. That you don't have to have a specific one necessarily. That you know you can mix and match um, with what, what you have. So I'm just adding a few of these. They're not... I don't, didn't color them or anything, just something to add a little sparkle. And that's our first card. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Val. Yes, teachable moments, right? Do as I say, not as I do. Famous line of teachers. Okay, so that's card one. I hope that you like that. We're going to have our last card is going to be very similar to it. Put this off to the side for now. It's always when I get in trouble when I say we're going to put it off to the side. All right, there's that one. All right, next on our card class of pretty in pink with um, having pink elements, um, this is going to be more of a traditional um, greeting card that we can do. Again, kind of highlighting. Um, you know, grabbing your um, embossing folders to do a step up on it. So for this card, what we're starting out with is a piece of bubble bath um, traditional card base of eight and a half by five and a half. Garden green, um, need two pieces of it, four and a four by five and a fourth, three and three fourths by one and a half. Basic white, need two pieces, one for the front at three and three fourths by five and for the inside of four by five and a fourth. And some more of that designer paper that we're using, delightfully eclectic, three and three fourths by one and a fourth. So we'll go ahead and make our card base. You can score it at four and a fourth or simply fold it in half. Get my bone folder, get a nice edge to it. And um, what I did is I thought I would just show you again the step up. Now here's again that retired embossing folder. Again, any um, flower embossing folder that you have um, when you get this at home. Well, if you get my kit, you'll get the um, retired, you'll get this um, already pre-embossed for you. But if you're following along and making it with your own um, products, if you don't have this one, any floral or any background embossing folder would work. So um, just kind of wanting to show you the difference here. So this is what it looks like. Let me go ahead and I'll get this layer. So our designer paper strip is going to go in the center of our garden green strip and the matting on this is just on the top and bottom so the sides will even up and looks like my sides are off just a tad so I don't let that worry me I just take my snips and we'll just get that cut off a little bit. There we go. So for a card front, oops, um, you know, you can have a nice clean look like this. Or if you wanted to, you could step it up with embossing folder by having it with that. And that's what we're going to do with class here today. So take our four by five and a fourth piece of garden green and we'll lay it on our Think Pink card base of Bubble Bath. When I was designing these cards too, I was really trying to think about, um, oh, what do I want to say? Um, kind of interjecting a little bit of either brights or neutrals with the pink. Um, you definitely can go all pastel um, with it, but just trying to um, play with the color palette a little bit. And of course, designer paper always helps us to 
um, to kind of tie everything together. Whoops, let me get out the sample here. And so this layer is going to go on the upper half of our card base. So I'm going to go like that. So just wherever, like if you want to think about this is halfway, um, here's halfway up the card. So the green starts, you know, go halfway, but then place it on the top part of halfway. If that makes sense. All right. So um, here's, let's do our stamping now. On this one, um, again, all of this is from our Timeless Arrangement Sentiment, um, or stamp set, the sentiments and the images. And this one now says, like, you, um, you make me smile. And let's see here. Oh, my berry burst is in the other room. Shoot, I thought I had them all here. Um, yeah, I think I want berry burst. Let me go and grab it real quick. Hold, please. Berry Burst has been like a go-to kind of ink that I've been doing lately. I had this out in the other room at a ready for another class, I think. All right, so again, here's another size of the um, stitch labels with the X. So this one's a different one than what we used before. It's a little larger. And you make me smile. Let me get within the frame here a little better than what I did last time when I was stamping. Okay. And while I've got very burst out, kind of knocking things over on here, um, we're going to use that same, the same kind of images that we did before. So on here, I'm going to use the berry burst and I'm going to ink up and I'm going to stamp twice without re-inking. So stamp once and then, you know, you can change it up just a little bit and stamp twice. I'm going to do that again. My second one didn't go very good, which is why we don't glue it down until we are all ready. There we go. So let me just show you that. So there's that and a little decoration. And you could do the same technique on with your envelope. And I get this ink done. <laughs> and let's get this one put on the inside. So when you um, get your kit, um, just be mindful. Well, of course, yours will be embossed, so you'll know. Um, but if you're making this at home with the measurements, the, the two white measurements are really close. So just make sure that you're grabbing the right one for the inside. Okay. And we're going to do that same technique with our... Um, are really are neat little sprigs that have the base on it for it. And we get the glue put out of reach for the moment. And it's again, it's kind of nice where, you know, if you wanted to, we could keep this intact and go like this with it. I'm going to show how you can go ahead and just um, cut it in half and then easily make a diagonal embellishment. And so that's what we're going to do. And this, we'll go ahead and use our stamp and seal plus again, just to use as an anchor. You could also use liquid glue, whatever you'd like to use. And we'll go ahead and, whoops.
and this these are hidden so that you can you know you can angle them quite a bit if you'd like and if they start to poke you know if the edge um, shows through just go ahead and trim a little bit of it off again I like that we have a lot of real estate there to work with and the same thing with that all right, let's get some dimensionals on it. Just go over where those are at just to reinforce it, even though with the seal plus, they're not really moving, going too, too far away from anything. And then this one is going right in the center on our banner we put on the front. And then in your packet, you're going to have three little flowers. Um, these three flowers are one die. So when you cut them out, um, it's one die, but you get when it's all said and done, you get three flowers. So we'll get those. Maybe. And this is where, you know, it's great to have your, take your pick tool with the putty end ready to go. So I'm going to put a little dollop of liquid glue where I want the flowers. Do that. Put one down here. And get my take your pick tool. And grab the putty end. Let's see, there's that one. Press down. Press down. And press down. And again, if you wanted to, you could come back with rhinestones um, or whatever other gems that you would want. Um, I think some of the sequins would be pretty. Here, I'm just kind of showing the iridescent pearls. Kind of, you know, think that the pearls in the center of the flowers just make it uber feminine. Rhinestones would really catch the light on that. And there's our other card. So there's our second pretty in pink card. That's part of card class this month. And do that. And then our last card that we're going to do is going to have the same layout as the first. And then again, we're talking embossing folders and, um, you know, using them to really jazz up the front of our cards um, with little effort, maximum impact. And um, we have this one here. So let's go ahead and we'll do our last card. So just like our other one, um, you know, the card base is the same. The different layers um, are that, um, so the card base front is the same. The layers are pool party, four by five and a fourth, and we need, um, not, I have two of them, but we just need one at four by two and a fourth. And then the bubble bath, we need um, a three and three fourths by five and two of them. Oh, we do need two of the pool party at four by four and a half. Sorry about that. And the bubble bath, um, three and three fourths by two and a fourth on that. And a piece of basic white that is um, three and three fourths or three and a half. Oh, what is that one? Let me see here. <laughs> three and a half by four and three fourths. Sorry about that. I didn't have that one written down. Okay. So very similar to what we did before. So I can go a little quicker on this one. So on this one, um, this is a current embossing folder. This one is um, the layered florals. So here's the layered florals embossing folder. And so it does go um, either which way as far as the, the flowers go. So it's no right or wrong. They go upside down 
in all different directions. And so we're gonna go ahead and just get all of our layering pieces put together. And ahead of time, I did our four and a fourth by eight and a fourth, scored it two and three fourths along the long side. And we're gonna need um, a set. So we're gonna need two each of our bubble bath that we've embossed with our embossing folder of choice. This time it's our um, layered florals on our pool party, on our pretty and pink cards. So local um, class attendees, this is what we're making this month. So the girls all will be making this later on today with the rescheduled Tuesday class now happening Wednesday. And then our other class will be on the 20th. I don't know what it's going on, but my hopefully it's still streaming because my my phone keeps like the um, connection keeps going on and off. So I hope everybody's still there. And this is just like before this layer here is going to go on our um, our four and a fourth by two and three fourths card. And we'll get this. So what I wanted to show um, by doing two of these layouts is that you can go either direction on it. So our first one, we opened it um, up and this one we're opening it, opening it side to side. And we can get these layers put on the inside. So there's not much of, these are just, I'm going to just call them matting or border layers that you're not going to see a whole lot of. So there's not really any reason to emboss these layers unless you really wanted to, but um, not much of the embossing design would show. So I'm not sure it would be worth, um, worth doing um, the embossing that way. And then we'll get these on. And so class also shows, as I think Joan was mentioning, that like as we, you know, enjoy using our cardstock color combinations, that um, lots of layers, um, you know, just kind of adds to that wow factor of our cards, too. And on this one, um, again, let's see, I think we'll go ahead and keep that one. Just like before, only go halfway or no more than halfway. So what, when this is closed, we can center it and then make sure that we don't have any adhesive on it. And then here we're going to do um, some little stamping again. Just going to keep using our floral image here. And we'll go back to our bubble bath ink. do that. So sometimes when I'm doing the same, um, you know, using the same theme, I tend to just use the same colors of ink. Um, it helps me to mass produce a little bit that way instead of rethinking color. Um, but I wanted to introduce on our card sample here, I did want to introduce a uh, a neutral color. So again, it's like this is this was very pastel, which is pretty. But I did want to, um, um, like, what do I want to say? I wanted to. I don't want to say darken it up, but I wanted to contrast it with um, a more neutral color. So I think that the pecan um, pie and the bubble bath are always a pretty combination, as well as the pool party and the pecan pie. So I chose that color for the sentiment and then to repeat the image on the inside of it. And I'm gonna do this again because I don't want this to peek out when I have the card closed. So I'm going to 
do my best to stay more in right in the center of the card with my image. And I'm using that leaf image again from our timeless arrangements. And I think I want to stamp off doing that off camera. There we go. Oops. Get rid of the bubble bath ink. Hang on to the pecan pie for just a second. And we'll get this put on the inside. There's nothing wrong if you wanted your images to show on the border on the outside of it. That's just kind of a personal preference that I have with this particular design. Otherwise, I'd want to see stamped images all around. I wouldn't want to just see the stem of it poking out here for no, <laughs> for no good reason. Just don't want to see it poking out. Okay, so um, we should be down to our last of our embellishments in our bag. And this is the last square of the element, or the last square or the rectangle um, label that comes in that die set. And on this one, this reads, um, Hope your day is filled with everything good. I like some of these sentiments that it can be with, you know, it can be for multi-purpose. So, you know, this could just be a hello. <clears throat> it could be, a, you know, open it up and it say happy birthday or um, congratulations or just whatever it might be. But, um, you know, it's just hoping that their day is just that, whatever we would want it to be. And I did put away the pink a little too fast because I have a nice um, dark image here or sentiment. I can play around with a little bit more stamping on the sentiment if I want. And bubble bath is a light pink. So let's just take our little image here. I'm going to stamp off and just do a little background stamping. Super light, just a little nod to what's inside. So barely, barely seen on it, but it just adds a little bit of something while we've got our stamp and ink out. And just like before, kind of just to show you how this could work like this. And in fact, on this one, I'm not going to um, cut it at all. We're just going to leave it just like it is, just to show that like that's kind of the purpose of it too. And so on this one, I can just go ahead and put my adhesive of choice on it. And I'm going to use my liquid glue. I was using um, the other glue just to be able to kind of tack it down into play. And so all of those will just kind of leave right like that. Isn't it so nice that we have a nice strip that just kind of can help us with our little sprigs? I like that. Okay. And once again, we'll get our stamp and dimensionals. And we'll put this on. Just don't really need to reinforce it because I've got liquid glue where I wanted it, but we'll just overlap it just a little bit. And this gets centered as well. And we'll get a glue that. Here I've got a linen thread that I've already tied into a bow ahead of time. And we'll put that up on the top for a little texture. Again, you can grab an embellishment of choice. Um, another option that you could do along the way if you're making these at home, um, if you have the classic matte dots. I think these would work really well with class today. If you were making them with your own supplies at home, just kind of scattering a few of these around. Never know where to put the third one. Uh, let's see. Where are you at? Oh, we got the bow over there. Let's put this one over here. <laughs> Done. <laughs> All right. So let's bring back in our cards. 
that we made here today at class and I'll turn the camera around. I actually am quite proud of myself. Um, 24 hours ago, I was um, counting down the time for when I could take my next pain pill. <laughs> and I was hoping so badly that I wouldn't have to reschedule class here today since I had to last week um, due to the family needing me at the business. But um, I'm here. You might have heard a little scratchiness in, the vo in my voice, but I'm doing um, a lot better. And we got class on time. I'm so excited about that. Um, but this is what I was talking about. I really wanted to show you that you could do the class or do the same layout, um, you know, do it so the flap is up or do it so that you're opening it you know, traditionally left to right on that. So that's our class. That would be the class that you would get with your online order this month. Um, I hope that you enjoyed class. If there's anything that you liked um, during class, I'd love to hear what it was that you liked. Um, you know, please, um, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up, a heart, and um, wherever you're following me. And if you haven't already, um, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, um, subscribe to my newsletter. All of the information's um, will be in the link below here later on. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching today. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.